Hello everyone and welcome back to Mixbuzz TV part 7 of our ultimate compression tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at parallel compression. Now the subject has been beaten to death. So more than focusing on how to do it and what you can pretty much see on every other tutorial, we're going to go a little more in depth. Why? Because parallel compression it can be used for so many things, so many different purposes. So first of all, let's take a quick look on how you do it and what it is parallel compression. So what you do is usually you take an element, let's say bass or vocals, you send it to an aux bus, you compress quite a lot and you blend the compressed signal with the uncompressed signal. That's it. We all know how pretty much to do a parallel channel, a parallel compression. On what you use it? Well, you can use it for everything, literally. There's so many ways that you can use parallel compression. Uh, we are just going to go into a few examples just to give you some, some ideas. Let's start, as usual, with drums. Here we have a drum bus. Okay. This drum is sent to an aux uh, track here. It's called X Comp Stereo Pre Fader, and this is it without any processing on. Okay, so it's just a copy, pretty much a double of the regular drums. Okay, so the more common use of parallel compression is to make the track uh, more dense and um, to still leave some dynamics on natural dynamics on the uncompressed signal. So usually you compress with a fast attack and you compress a lot to make the parallel bus very, very solid and with pretty much no dynamic at all because you want to bring up uh, in this case, the room and and the the sustain of the drums and kill the transients because you have the natural transients on the uncompressed signal. So let's use the stock uh, compressor on Pro Tools. Let's go at 10 ratio. Very fast attack and uh, 80 milliseconds are released. This is a pretty common setting. The, the drum is pumping a lot. The transients are not passing at all. So blending in, what I want, if I use these settings, it to, to make the drum a little more dense and to bring up the room and the sustain. Without it, blending it in. Without it. Okay, it gets more aggressive, it gets more dense, and is richer. The sound of the drum is just, you know, there's a lot more of everything because uh, uh, we, are, we are compressing a lot here and the release is very fast. So the sustain of the drum and the room, it comes up. Now, this is when I want to go in depth because let's just keep these settings here and let's just move the attack and the release. You will hear how much different it can sound the parallel bus, the parallel compression channel. If I lower the release, you'll get a lot more room, a lot more distortion, and it will become more aggressive. Okay, you can hear the, the snares on the snare drum. And you can hear the artifacts of the compression but this is what we want obviously the volume here is just a lot more than i would normally use but it's just to 
make it apparent so you can hear it better. Just the compressed. If you listen to the kick drum is distorting, it's crapping out, but this is an effect that we can use. Very fast attack, very fast release, uh, high ratio and a lot of gain reduction going on. But this is just a way to use uh, parallel compression on drums. What if I want more snap? So let's just lower the attack time. And lower the release. Okay, now I have more snap and not so much room like I, I had before. Let's lower the attack a little more. Okay, let's hear just the compressed sound. Okay, so if I want more snap, I want the release not to be too fast, so the room, it doesn't come out, the reverb, it doesn't come out too much. And I want a slow attack, so the, the first part of the transient of kick and drum pass through the compressor, and applying makeup gain, I get more snap. As opposed to like this, like it was before. Completely squashed. It's important to lower the release too, because the compressor not only breathes, but it doesn't allow the room to come out. And it doesn't distort that much either. It's here with the drum. Without it. Okay. If I lower the release and make it fast again, room will come out again. Okay. This way, I get just a snap. And this is one way to use it, parallel compression on drum. Another way to use it, for example, is with mid-side compression on the parallel channel. So we took a look at mid-side compression in the previous episodes. We are gonna apply mid-side compression on our parallel channel. Why? Well, we've seen if I want aggressiveness and if I want a room sound, what setting to use. Then we've seen if I want snap, but what if I want a wider stereo image only in the parallel channel. We just hear the compressed one. Could do. This is mid side, so it's Latvert here, and same settings for both channels, but as you can see, the mid channels gets compressed more, making the stereo image wider. Without it, Let's try to match the level a little bit. With. Without. In this case, I'm using parallel compression because I want a wider image and a richer content on the sides. So parallel compressing, but in mid side, I have control on each channel. For example, I don't want kick a snare in the mid, like almost at all. So I can do this. Let's just hear the channel, the compressed one. See, I removed the mid channel almost completely. I'm still controlling peaks on the sides. But this will widen my drum a lot. Without it. 
Okay. I like the way the symbols breathe. They come out, but they are not uh, too harsh, not too upfront, because they are on the sides pretty much almost exclusively. And this is obviously a lot. You can bring the mid channel back in. Or I can do the opposite. I can take out the sides from the compressed parallel channel and bring just the mid in to make it more focused. Just a few examples on drums. My favorite for when I want a wide band, I don't want mid side, I don't want any special trick when I want to go straight for a uh, parallel compression on the drum bus is the soft tube dynamite. This thing is insane. It is absolutely insane. Let's see it with the drum. It makes it pop so much. Just a touch of it. Without it. And you can go in pick mode and just hear the compressed signal and really, really destroy it. Without it. Play with the release. Whole mix. You make it hard, I want to stop and stare. Behind those eyes, without else you got in there, cause you make me feel like I should learn to stop time. On the whole mix is very dramatic. You, you can hear the difference. You can hear a lot more of the ringing and the snare and the room coming out. It makes a world of difference. You make it hard, I want to stop and stare. With it. Behind those eyes, what else you got in there? Cause you make me feel like I should learn to stop time. Okay, so we've seen you can use parallel compression on drums for many, many, many purposes. Uh, you can get snap, or you can get room, or you can get the width. And um, there's not just one way to use parallel compression. And this was just drum. You can use it on bass, on vocals, and I love parallel compression on electric guitars because it makes them um, like so much denser and um, a lot of harmonics, especially if you use a compressor like this one that it distorts a bit. It has a little bit of saturation. And you can use it on the whole mix if you want. And actually, I'm gonna show you in a second a trick to use parallel compression on the whole mix. Well, almost. Let's let's see what I mean. So here's a way to use parallel compression that is not so common and probably you haven't seen it before. I stole this trick from a very well-known engineer and I loved it when I saw it. And um, I've used it quite often uh, since then. And here's what it is. Usually you see parallel compression used on drums a lot, on single tracks like bass and vocals, but this is different. I call it X-Comp Mix. This is a stereo aux bus. And I send to this bus everything but the drums. So I have my bass, my guitars, the effects, the background vocals and the lead vocals. Everything but the drum. So I'll bypass the compressor. This is the compressor I like to use. I actually have two uh, uh, 1176s hardware and that's usually how I do it. In this case, we'll use the plugin. So here is what is sent to this bus without compression. You make it hard, I wanna stop and stare. Okay. Behind those eyes, what else you got in there? Cause you make me feel like I should. 
So we have bass, guitars, vocals, background, and um, the lead vocal. And what I do is I compress this submix without the drums with the 1176s. So let's lower the volume. You make it hard, I wanna stop and stare. Make it pumpy. Behind those eyes, fast attack, fast release, you. high ratio. Make About 10 dB of, of, of gain reduction, but it goes even higher in the loudest part. But you make it these are the settings. Hard, I wanna stop and stare. Behind those eyes, what else you got okay. in there? Cause you make me feel like I should learn to stop. So now let's hear it with the mix. Let's start without it. You make it hard, I wanna stop and stare. Bring it in. Behind those eyes, what else you got in there? Cause you make me feel like I should learn to stop time. Without. You make it hard. With behind those eyes, what else you got in there? Cause you make me feel like I should learn to stop time. And you can hear the vocals, it gets more present, the bass gets more present. And of course, here too, you can use instead of a, a stereo compressor like I'm doing now with the with the 76. You can use mid-side, you can uh, use any any other kind of compressor that you like. What I don't advise is to EQ this uh, parallel mix bus differently or at all for, for that matters, because you will end up with face problems. So if anything, uh, if you want a different color, pick up a different compressor that maybe it has a, a little more sizzle or or a little more bottom, but don't EQ this bus. You make it hard, I want to stop and stare. Now if we get Behind those eyes, what else you got in there? the compressor that we had in the drums, the parallel compressor, we get actually the fader. We have these two faders here that control the parallel compression on the mix and the parallel compression on the drums. And we can blend and move these two to really, really change the uh, impact of our mix with just these two faders. You make it hard, I want to stop and stare Behind those eyes, what else you got in there? Cause you make me feel like I should learn to stop time Without them Drums, Behind those eyes, mix. What else you got in there? Cause you make me feel like I should learn to stop time. Okay, it gets a lot richer and and uh, there's a lot of everything. And um, this is just an idea. It's just an example. Experiment with this. Use parallel compression in different ways, not just what you see on, on other videos and other tutorials, just slap a compressor on, on a parallel channel and bring the fader. No, uh, try different things. Um, parallel compression can be very, very creative. So this is a nice trick I find to have a parallel compression for the drum and a parallel compression for the mix. So this was it for parallel compression. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.